Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Paper Files podcast. I'm your host, Landon, a.k.a. Theater of the Phantom. Uh, and I'm joined by my co-host, Lane, a.k.a. The Smooth Criminal. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the, to this, the best show on the internet. So, today, what are we going to be talking about, Lane? What are we, we going to go over? Oh, all right. So, we kind of hinted at it at the end of the last episode. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking down the discography of one of the most interesting and, I think, best emo bands currently. Um, and that would be Origami Angel. And uh, I think we're both really excited to talk about them at length because they're, like both one of like one of our favorite bands like together like this is a band we we both love dearly and have both seen what well, me kind of but we'll, we might get into that i don't know but yeah we're, we're gonna be talking about origami angel today yeah so we're gonna be going over um the entire origami angel discography which this is gonna be it's gonna be a long one this is gonna be a very long one um we did want to clarify that this episode is not going to be a complete discography review because we are going to be excluding Holy Split and Origami Angel Bork Minecraft because Origami Angel Bork Minecraft is a remix album and Holy Split is a split and Origami Angel only has two songs on it and those two songs are amazing and Commander Salamander sucks. I I wouldn't I don't know if they necessarily suck. They're just not for me. I can't really get a whole lot out of them. But if if someone's listening to this podcast that enjoys them, then that's totally fucking cool. And hey, maybe one day we'll cover them and give them a second chance. Who knows? Probably not, but maybe. Um, but yeah, we're we're just gonna exclude those because one of them isn't Ligami and the other one is just a remix album of songs they were already released. So not gonna be including them. We're gonna be including their two main studio albums and their six main EPs. Um so yeah, is there anything you want to say before we we jump into reviewing the the Gami discography? Uh, I think I'm uh I think I'm good. I'm I, I mean, we could talk about our experiences. Uh how did you get into Origami Angel Lane? How did I get into Gami? That's a, that's a great question. Um so I have a friend named Nick. We both have a friend named Nick. He's fucking great and he's in the band called Ivy League. Um, they're really cool. We might have them on the podcast one day, maybe. They're they're not necessarily emo, but they're like indie rock and they're really good. And you guys should totally check them out. Um, but they dropped an album, their debut album in October called Homecoming. October of last year, 2022, called Homecoming. Um, really cool album. Um, I helped write some of the stuff on it, so that was pretty cool. Um, but I went down to Maryland with them to play for their album release party, and their bassist, Keith, is another really cool motherfucker. Um, and they like a ton of like emo, not, not just emo. They like a ton of other music, but like emo was like a main thing that all of us were talking about then. And they had recommended me origami angel and like me being a, an idiot with music, like recommendations and opinions. I didn't end up listening to them until like two months later. Um, but I ended up checking out somewhere city and fucking fell in love with the band after that. So Keith kind of indirectly got me into Origami Angel. It just took a while for me to actually take the recommendation. Um, so I deeply apologize for that. Um, but yeah, that's how I got in the Gami. And check out Ivy League. They're super cool. Uh, yeah, that's how I got in the Gami. Shout out, Keith Ivy, for getting Lane into Gami. Because the reason I got into Gami was because Lane told me to listen to Some More City. And I did because I was bored in class one day. And uh, it it blew me away. And for context in terms of um, emo music... I wasn't, at the time, a big fan. And it's ironic considering our first episode, but I wasn't a fan. Lane had me listen to Sports by Modern Baseball. Wasn't a fan, <laughs> and I had listened to a few Mom Jean songs, and I wasn't really crazy about it, and I didn't... Well, I might move. I didn't really, um... I didn't really fuck with Midwest Emo that much, and then I listened to Origami Angel, and I had Somewhere City on repeat for a long time, and it kind of... That was kind of my gateway into, um... Like into emo music in general and now we have this podcast which is strictly surrounded uh by emo music and so me and lane uh well lane partially but uh we both saw origami angel live i saw them uh in may of this year and lane saw them pretty recently yeah but my story with them is kind of it, it made me really sad so it, i saw them in august and it was at the four chord music festival in pittsburgh it's a really really cool event they have every year it's a lot of punk and emo music and a lot of really really cool bands i saw magnolia park there play and they were really cool as well um they're fucking great live if you ever get a chance to catch them 
Um, my very first pit ever uh, was when I was seeing when whenever I was there seeing Magnolia Park. They have so much energy; they're super fun. Um, but I was mainly there to see Origami Angel. Obviously, I wanted to see like Taking Back Sunday and Yellow Card were there too, like all the big bands. Um, but I was mainly there to see Gami. There was obviously one of my favorite bands. I've talked them up enough in this episode, and I was right up front for their set. And they came out. And they opened with the brightest days when Thank You New Jersey. And then I think after it was Self Destruct and Bossa Nova Core. And then they did Kobayashi Maru. And they started the intro for Second Best Friend. And I was so fucking hyped because that's one of my favorite songs off the new record. And then they stopped right like as soon as the song is about to start. And Rylan was told like from the side of the stage that they had to stop the show for like 10 minutes because of a weather warning. Um, a tornado had fucking touched the ground like 30 minutes away. So obviously you can't have like a festival go on like that with, you know, a possible tornado, like possibility of a tornado coming in and fucking everything up. Um, so they took a break for like 10 minutes and I was just praying to fucking God that they'd come back and finish the set. And they never did. They, they Rowling came out and said that they wouldn't be playing the rest of their set. And I got so sad, but I did get to meet them after. So that was, that was really fucking cool. It was a really terrible interaction because I was extremely awkward and didn't know what to do with myself, but they're really, really cool guys. They're super, super nice. Um, they're everything you'd expect them to be. Um, Rylan had a Pokemon shirt on. That was fucking cool. Um, see, I'm glad I got to see them at all, even if it was like half of a set and it was really cool to meet them and, you know, shake their fucking hands. Like I love these guys as musicians and admire them a lot. So it's really, really cool. They probably thought I was really weird because of how I acted, but Besides the point, uh, yeah, I kind of half saw Origami Angel, but Landon got a full set. He recorded them with this DS. That was really funny. Um, yeah, yeah. I went to the uh, the show, and I got to get a full set. And I had me and um, you guys. If you're if you've been on my channel before, if you know my channel, you know. Um, chances are, you know Wayfaring Robin One because I've done some work with him before. Hit me and him went to the show together, and we both brought our, brought our DSs and. We held them up uh, recording the show, and then there was another third guy, and then we ended up getting called out during the show by Ryland. It was really cool. But uh, Lame beat me out by uh, actually meeting them. I didn't get to meet them because security kicked us out by the end of the show. <laughs> yeah, they, they said they were going to be walking around the venue, and I, I thought it was bullshit. Like, they just, they just need something to keep the fans appeased. But they were actually around. And that was really cool. They were by the merch tents, and I got I got a picture with them. I, I look awful in it because I was like shaking because the, uh, but um yeah, it was it was really cool to see them at least for a little bit. Um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, while while we hop into this amazing discography, yeah. So let's get into the Origami Angel discography. So what is our our first EP, Lane? What is our first EP released by the Gami Gang? All right, the very first EP, the very first release. Um, full length release, I guess, by Gami is uh, the Quiet Hours EP released in 2017. Yeah, so again, a little bit of more background. Rylan Heggy. Also, fuck you, Rylan, for saying that's how you pronounce your name. I don't like it, <laughs> but whatever. So I heard that in an interview that that's how you say his name. Rylan Heggy, guitar and vocals, and I think he does bass on the studio recording, even yeah. though they don't have a bassist on stage. And Pat Doherty, uh, the drummer, kick ass fucking drummer. Um, it's a duo. the The band is a duo. They're like the emo Dark Throne. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, really nobody's gonna get that reference. But it's like a good inside thing. I don't know. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, I uh, I don't remember how they met. I think Rylan met Pat at a. He was I don't know doing another show. Like he saw Pat at a show or something. I forget where. Origami Angel formed in Washington D.C. So. That's just a little bit of background. And then they released the Quiet Hours EP. Um, so how do you feel about this album, Lane? Okay, so first of all, I think this is a good EP. I don't think Gami have a bad release in their catalog. I think they're one of the most consistently good emo bands that you'll find out right now. Um, but this is, I think, definitely one of their weaker projects because they haven't really found their sound yet. Um, a lot of their... Projects kind of have a theme, and you'll see as we go along, especially on the EPs, they really tackle a specific sound or theme throughout the music. And this one kind of has that going for it, where a lot of the songs are very slow and mellow. But I don't think that was intentional. I think that was just genuinely how the band sounded at the time. They were making music that sounded more similar to their peers. 
um, than what they would later end up doing, which is a whole lot more standout. It has a lot more unique elements from the other bands around them. Um, but starting out, Quiet Hours, I think, is a pretty solid introduction to the band. Um, it's a lot of slower songs, a lot of songs on clean tone guitars, some acoustics here and there. Um, and they're very minimal lyrically. Um, it takes a lot of focus away from the lyricism in place of more um, calm and like, you know, more soothing instrumentals, which is really interesting, um, especially on a song like Step, which I think is actually Origami Angel's weakest song. Um, I don't think it offers a whole lot to the table, but I really like the instrumental builds and stuff in that song. I think it's really pretty. Um, and it does have some of their weaker material on it, but I think as a whole, it's a good entry in their catalog. Um, it's just, it's definitely not where you should start with them. And there's a reason why they don't play really any of this stuff anymore and why Ryland has gone on record to say that Osmosis is his least favorite Gami song. Um, it's not what they would end up doing later. Um, and it's not their best material, but I still think it's worth checking out. Just make it one of the last projects you check out from the band. Yeah, I would say up until um, maybe Gen 3 or until um, the Holy Split EP is when they really find their sound. So up from Quiet Hour to Doing the Most to if you want to consider Holy Split all the way up until Gen 3 is when they re- I'd say they really found their sound. But Quiet Hour's lane was right. Um, it's a very soft-spoken EP. Uh, acoustic, very mellow, very slow. This isn't... Ryland doesn't do his signature somewhat high-pitched vocals like you hear in Somewhere City or in Gami Gang. He, he, it's, he's very soft-spoken throughout this EP. It's almost like he's whispering. It's a very it's a very ch- just chilled EP. The album cover, or the EP cover, I'd say reflects pretty well how the, the EP sounds. Um, it's for again for it's a good it's a great start. It doesn't sound like what Gami would get popular off of, but it's still an amazing EP, and I do really enjoy it. And um, you get songs <clears> like <throat> like some of my favorites, "Mark My Words" and "SpaceX T-shirt." Um, some of those are like my personal favorite, and I think it was a good way to lay really lay the groundwork for Origami Angel. And I don't think it's a bad EP at all, especially when they lead it up with. They they lead up with doing the most after this, and it's like I, they haven't found their sound, but that doesn't mean that they haven't. Like it doesn't mean that it's a bad EP at all. I actually think it's really really good, and especially for a first EP. Um, if you watch Tripping in the Dark, the modern baseball documentary, there was um, uh, the I think it was the singer for Wonder Years that said that for Bren's first band, he was writing, like, amazing fucking songs, and I feel like that is kind of the case for Origami Angel, obviously not to the extent that Modern Baseball did with sports, because sports is a masterpiece, but for a first EP, and for the first songs that Ryland and Gami released, um, this is a really, really fucking good EP, and, uh, yeah, so Quiet Hours, I'm actually a really big fan of. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do think Quiet Hours is, is a good release. And I would agree that Mark My Words is one of the best songs on it. And what you said about Ryland, like, kind of having that more whispery voice on some of the songs, the biggest example of that is Notice, which is the last song on the album. Most of it is just Ryland and an acoustic guitar. There's, like, no mixing on it at all. It sounds like Ryland just, like, set his phone or something down in, like, the middle of a bathroom and just started recording it on his acoustic guitar. It's a really intimate and, honestly, a really vulnerable, like, emotionally vulnerable song from Gami, which I don't know if they necessarily do a whole lot in their catalog so it's a really really unique song for them um it's 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 one of my favorite gummy songs ever i think it's it's a really good closure to the ep it's a really emotive end to this ep um and yeah mark my words is awesome i think hey there it might be the most underrated origami angel song ever the chorus gets stuck in my head occasionally i really do like that one um and as for like least favorites i mean step is like their worst song i think but everything else it's not bad it's not amazing it's a good middle ground you'll find some stuff you like on here if you're coming from their later stuff or if you just like emo in general it's a great ep um just not their best i do think they get better obviously <clears throat> yeah they do they do definitely get better um and following up with their 2017 release is 2018's uh well before we get into this do you have any final words that you want to say about um uh quiet hours 
Uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's a good EP. It's a, it's a nice start to the band, but it's not where you should start with them and their catalog. Give, give it a little bit for the other releases and then come back to it. Yeah. So we follow this up with the Doing the Most EP released in 2018. Uh, for context, I don't know if I mentioned this, but 2017 was when, uh, was when uh, 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 Quiet Hour was released. And then one year later, 2018, Doing the Most releases. And this comes with one of my favorite origami angel songs rom hack and honestly a lot of these songs are amazing like finn the long and boring fucking name um i don't know what the the entire name for finn is but a long and untold story of how i know it's meant to be yeah that's what finn is and then (laughs) rom hack (laughs) rom hack is one of my favorites this ep presents i think what you the best of early gami if you want to get some of the best early origami angel songs i think you should check out doing the most after checking out obviously the main ones like gami gang and uh somewhere city i think you should definitely check this out it's a great example of early gami and some of their best songs in my opinion uh how do you feel about this line yeah this is one of my favorite origami angel releases period i think it's one of their best works ever um, this is where they start to actually become what you'll know them as. The production is a little more rough around the edges compared to their later releases. Um, it's the guitars don't have that signature like sheen to them that you'll find on an album like Gami Gang or Somewhere City, but they they have that unique tone, and this is the start of that unique guitar sound that Ryland will kind of take on with him for the rest of their discography. Um, this is where you'll first find it. Um, it's a great introduction to the actual like full sound of the band. Um, you got some really prominent electric guitars on here, some really fast and high pitched vocals by Rylan, which will be like his signature vocal style for the rest of the band's discography. Um, it's the start of a lot of things that they'll carry on with them for the rest of their catalog. And I think it's one of their absolute best releases. Every single song on here, I think, with the exception of With You, which is still a good song, but all the other songs are absolutely amazing, and that one is just like pretty good. Um, but other than that, like all the rest of the songs are like in contention for some of Gami's best songs ever. I think Effective Power is a really, really cool opener. It's got these more ambient middling sections in between the uh the actual lyricism, like the lyrics and stuff. Um, very jittery, kind of fast-paced song to open the album. Um I love Thanks, I Hate It. It's, it's, a, it's got a lot of contrasting emotions in terms of the vocals. How the beginning kind of has this more traditional Gami thing going on, whereas the ending, Rylan is full on screaming the vocals. It's one of my favorite moments in any Gami song literally ever. Um, Rom Hack is one of their best songs, period. I think it's probably, it could very well be their best song. And that's really weird to say because it's not on one of their full albums, but Rom Hack is it just encapsulates everything great about the band to me. Like it has more of the slower sections. It's got the humor built in with the intro. Um, it's got some of my favorite lyrics by Ryland ever. Um, I think it could very well be their best song, although I don't know if it's my personal favorite, but I think it's like the definitive Origami Angel track. And Finn is probably my favorite song on the EP. It means a lot to me. It's gotten me through a shit ton of stuff. Um, it's so, 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 so pretty. It's one of the very few songs like this in their discography, aside from like Greenbelt Station. I think this is like one of the only ones that's like solely Ryland and an acoustic for like the entire thing. It's so, 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 so pretty. It's one of their best songs. And yeah, Doing the Most is easily one of their best EPs. I love it to death. It's fantastic. After you finish the two main albums, check this one out. It's amazing. Yeah, those are my thoughts. Yeah, so I would agree that, uh, Doing the most is definitely one of the one of the better EPs that I I really I really enjoy this. I wouldn't go as far to say it's it's as good as Gen Three, maybe not, but um, again, Rom Hack is just like Lane, one of my favorites. I do think it is one of the better Gami songs, or not one of the better ones, but one of the best Gami songs because Gami has so many amazing songs. And um, one thing I think everybody loves about this song is that uh, Origami Angel is no stranger to having opening samples in their songs they sampled star wars before and uh so this one i think has one of the best gummy samples ever which was um i think these words came from the pokemon movie and then the the song hits i think that's one of my favorite it also just like lane said it's the earliest example of what 
Rylan's vocals would sound like later on, but I also think this is an early an early example of the comedy that uh, Origami Angel would bring to their music because Origami Angel isn't a completely depressing emo band. They do have their songs that, you know, is a little sad every once in a while. But for the most part, they're a pretty upbeat band, and this is, I think, a great example of the early comedy that they wanted to bring to their to their album and just to be fun with it. And uh, also, yeah, it's just a, it's just, I think, a good, um, a good predecessor to what Origami Angel would sound like in the near future. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you brought up that they're more of an upbeat band in, in the emo scene. And I think it actually makes them like the perfect band to show someone if you want to get them into the genre. Like I got Landon into emo through Origami Angel because they've got that good blend where they do have some of the traditional emo topics and things discussed in their music, but a lot of it's actually very uplifting and like positive sounding music. And I think that's something that can really appeal to like first time listeners of the genre who aren't necessarily comfortable with that yet. I've shown Gami songs to people that I never ever would ever see them listening to any other emo band, but they just love Origami Angel. You know, like it's a band that I think anyone can pick up and enjoy, even if they're not, really too deep in the emo. Um, and I think that's, I think they're one of the absolute best bands to show someone who's just getting into the genre. And a lot of the songs off of doing the most, I think are good starter songs for the band too. So yeah, I, I, I love this EP. It's one of my personal favorites. Yeah. So um, other than that, I, I do think that you should definitely check this out if you haven't already. Uh, it's one of the better Origami Angel EPs. Really, really feel good uh, EP. Any final words? Or we move on to the next one, Lane. No, other than it's like one of, if not the best EP I've ever heard. Yeah, definitely an amazing EP. So, if we were to be doing a full discography review after this, we would be doing Holy Split, which I will mention. Um, the two Origami Angel songs on this uh, EP are fucking amazing. Origami Bagel and Danny's DeVito. Danny's DeVito. I got to hear Origami Bagel live. Uh, when I went to go see Origami Angel, but really, th this these two songs are really good. Uh, if you want to talk anything about that lane, yeah, I do like these songs. The, I, a lot of people pulled up Denny's DeVito as like one of Gami's best tracks. I do like it, but I don't really return to it a whole lot. It's not one of my favorite songs by them, and neither is Origami Bagel. Although I do think it's a very underrated song. Um, it's kind of a different sound from the rest of the band's catalog. Um, but not really one of my favorites. Like in terms of those two songs, not some of my favorites by the band. Um, and Holy Split as a whole, not my favorite split in the world. I'm not a huge fan of the Commander Salamander tracks. Um, but yeah, they're good songs. I enjoy them. Also, I don't think I don't think it's possible for it to be anyone's favorite split when all the Marietta Mobo splits exist. So Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so those are those were definitely definitely above this, but <laughs> moving on is one of my favorite, definitely one of my favorite EPs, is the Gen 3 EP. I got to hear this entire, they actually played the entire Gen 3 EP live when I went to go see them. And uh, Gen 3 is a play on uh, Pokemon Gen 3, uh, the Gen 3 Pokemon games, which include Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, and uh, Gale of Darkness XD, or XD, Gale of Darkness, whatever you want to call it. This entire EP is inspired directly from Pokemon, which again is an, an early sign before any albums were released that it's just, it shows how fun Origami Angel is and how they're just nerds that like to make this type of music. And it's it's a really fun album. Ruby, you know, all these songs are super good. And um, Ryland, also, Ryland also mentions Twin Peaks in one of them, which I really <laughs> appreciate as, as a massive Twin Peaks fan. Uh, me and Lane are both really big Pokemon fans. Uh, so I'm sure Lane could appreciate this album a lot. And uh, I'm a huge, huge, huge Twin Peaks fan. So uh, I, th I thought it was really cool that actually hearing like Twin Peaks in one of my favorite bands, hearing them talk about it, I thought was really cool. And um, XD Gale of Darkness is honestly one of my favorite Gami songs just because it's so fast and it's like, it's a it's Gami's really only rap song. And it's just such a fucking fun song to sing to. It, like I... It's one of my personal favorites. And I do, I just love the homage to Pokemon that they have in here. It's it's on the Gami Boy. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's just, it's such a fun, so, such a fun album. 
it's really just one of my favorite things about this band is this EP. This might be one of my fa- one of my favorite EPs ever, and it also established the sound of the band that would be that you would hear later on. I think this is the Origami Angel sound right here. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that because doing the most does have most of that core sound in place, but a lot of it is still kind of sad and depressing. Um, but on this EP, it's just full throttle. Let's make a fucking EP about Pokemon. Let's have an absolute fun time with this. Let's not take it too seriously. Let's just have a good time. And I think that's like the essence of Origami Angel for the most part. And I think this EP captures it so very well. It's kind of a hot take for me. It's not one of my absolute favorite releases from Gami, although I do think it's really good. Um, I think the, the one song that holds it back for me is Emerald. I, I think Ruby, Sapphire, and XD Gale of Darkness are up there with some of their best songs. But Emerald, it's still a good track. I just, every single time I listen to the EP, I always just forget it exists. And even now, it's kind of hard for me to recall any specific aspects of it. It's just not one of my favorite Gami songs. I'd probably rank it in the bottom 10 of their discography. But that's the like the only thing that holds this back for me. Because the rest of the songs are so fucking good. My favorite is probably XD Gale of Darkness. Like you said, I think it's like easily one of their most unique songs. It's like, like you said, the only like rap song they've done where Ryan is like saying all the words really fast and then he goes into this metal breakdown near the end. It's just so much fun. I love Ruby too. It's a really, really sweet, quick song. Love that one. It's a pain in the ass to play on guitar because Rollins a god. Um, Sapphire I love. It's like the big highlight on the album. Um, and I just like how everything seemed around Pokemon. Gen 3 is one of the best Pokemon generations, if not the best. It's not yeah, my personal favorite, but it's in the top yeah, three. Without a doubt. If not, get, no, there's no really no exception. Gen 3 is just the best. Yeah, Gen, Gen 3, it's it's one of their more iconic releases. I think it's really good. It's not one of my personal favorites by them, um, but I do think it's one of the first EPs by the band that you should check out, aside from the main albums. Um, it's, it's just so much fun. It's, it's a really nice burst of energy. It's under 10 minutes, four tracks, super quick listen, super, super fun. Please check it out. It's awesome. It's great. And it's a, it's also a really good precursor to the first full length album that they released. Yeah. And I do want to agree with Lane that, um, Emerald does kind of hold this album back a little bit, but I've listened to this album back to back so much that Emerald does kind of stick with me a little bit. But it is not the most memorable song. And um, Sapphire, of course, like I said, Twin Peaks, and I love Twin Peaks. XD Gale of Darkness, Ruby is a very sweet song, but this album in general, even even with Emerald, including Emerald, I think is one of my favorites uh, ever. Any any next words, Lane? Uh, no, I, I love Gen 3. I think it's, yeah, it's definitely where Gami's sound becomes solidified. I think it's the start of that. Um, it's a great record. I definitely recommend checking it out. It's flipping fantastic. And yeah, wh- where does that bring us, Landon? Where does this bring us? This brings us to the best Origami Angel release, or arguably the best Origami Angel be- release I don't, I don't even know if it's arguable. I think this is like this is the answer for the best word Gami Angel release. Yeah, we've been talking about doing this one for God knows how long since the podcast ever even started. Since before we created this podcast, we had another podcast that we wanted to talk about some more city on. We have some more city. That's that's what we're on to next. It's after Gen Three. Somewhere City, I cannot begin to put into words how amazing this fucking album is. Track by track by track, all the way until the air up here. The final song is just perfect. The track listing is perfect. I wouldn't change a thing about it. I wouldn't switch around any of the songs. Everything works into itself perfectly. It's one of my favorite albums in the entire world. And I was fortunate enough to hear a lot of these songs live. And really, just this album is such a fucking amazing album. Um... Most of the songs on here are my favorites. I can't really pinpoint a song that is my favorite. I love Dr. Hoomst. I love Find Your Throne. I love uh, 24 Hour Drive Through. Like, so many of these songs I just love so much. And then you have Escape Rope, which is another Pokemon reference. But really, this album is just so amazing. It's filled with a lot of good messages, positive messages. And I think everybody should listen to this album. This is the album that got me into uh, emo music. 
and consequently created this podcast. So if it wasn't for this album, this podcast wouldn't exist. Yeah, yeah, honestly, which is funny because the album, the, the podcast is titled after like based on Gami Gang, but it's funny that this is the album that like sparked it. Um, but yeah, Somewhere City, it's, I don't even know really where to start with Somewhere City because every few months or so, an album comes up that I end up discovering that is just like a definitive album for me. Like, a lot of them aren't emo, so I won't really go into depth on the whole lot of them, but one of them is sports, um, which we talked about last time. Um, and there's a lot of albums like that for me that come up just in my music listening. There's a ton of them that have come up this year. But this is probably one of, if not the most important album that I've discovered this year for me personally. Um, it came to me at a time in my life when the beginning of this year when I wasn't really feeling too good about myself and I wasn't really enjoying being myself and being in the presence of myself, if that makes any sense. Just not enjoying myself at all. And this album came around with a really positive message and a, a really fucking great concept that I think the band absolutely nails in every single capacity. Um, for those who aren't entirely familiar with the whole basis of the album, if you, you probably, you've probably heard it if you're listening to this. It's like the most popular release. But if you don't know like the whole concept and thing behind Somewhere City, it's like the album cover and like you know the insert that comes with the vinyl like it makes it seem like an actual place but it's more of a mindset it's more of just like a place you can go into your head to feel better and to just not worry about anything and that's really what the opening song welcome to is about really like it really describes the feeling of somewhere city what it's supposed to make you feel what it wants you to achieve once you enter it um and the main like tag of the album is like the city never lets me down. Like I can go to this mindset or go to this place whenever I need to feel some sort of release or feel some sort of break from whatever the hell I'm feeling about myself or whatever's going on in my life. Like it's such, such a great concept for an emo record. And it, it was like, honestly a concept and message that I really needed whenever I first discovered this album. Like it's something that I've always taken in stride with me. Um, since I've heard the album, I've played this thing to absolute death. I know every single word to this album. I can recognize every single lick from it and pinpoint where it is in each song. I just, I love this record so, so much. It brings back so many good memories. It makes me feel great and fantastic about myself. It's one of the best albums I've ever heard. It's fucking amazing. Every single song is awesome. It's got my personal favorite Origami Angel song on it, which is The Air Up Here, which is... Oh, it's it's one of the best ending tracks to any album ever, in my opinion. Um, I, I could wax poetic about this album for the next hour if you had me, but we have a few other releases to get through, so I'm not going to do that. But this is... Yeah, this is absolutely where you should start with Origami Angel. I can't stress enough how much this album will change you. It will change your life. You will lose your virginity because of this album. You will get married because of this album. You will become a billionaire because of this album. You will, I don't know, become the the, the best person ever because of this fucking album. I'm telling you, it's a fucking life changer. It's amazing. It's incredible. Please listen to it. It's definitely where you should start with the band. I love it a lot. I know Landon loves it a lot. Yeah, I, I love this album. Really. I, I I do love this album a lot. It is an album that does mean a lot, and I do really like the metaphor of Somewhere City. I think Somewhere City is an amazing metaphor. It's not an actual place, obviously, but it's the whole thing is that Somewhere City is the mindset that keeps you happy, and is it's the one thing that people can can't take away from you. They can take away any physical item. They can take away whatever they want, but they can't take away what you have personally in your mindset what and what keeps you happy and something that'll never leave you that'll always really be there for you uh and that you can always be there whenever you want to and i think it is a really good message and it, it, songs like 24 hour drive through is something that does hit hard for me because uh the whole idea of the song is let's just go out and do some stupid shit because you're sad like i'm not going to try to cheer you up i'm not going to treat you like you're lesser just because you're sad. It's just, you're sad, let's go fucking do some stupid shit. That doesn't mean anything. And it'll just, like... It, it's it's such a hard-hitting song because of just the message behind it. It's just, like, you're sad, let's go fucking do something. Let's go have fun. 
and I feel like a lot of people could benefit from listening to this album and really looking into the lyrics and there's songs like Find Your Throne and the chorus is literally, hey, that's a pretty damn good idea. Uh, this entire album is just really motivational uh, and I think everybody should listen to this album at least once in their life. It is one of my favorite albums ever made, if not my favorite album ever made. Uh, maybe next to Sports by Modern Baseball, but really, this album is fucking phenomenal. It is amazing. It is, yeah, I, I can't express enough how much I love this album, and uh, I was very fortunate to hear a lot of these songs live, which uh, I'm very thankful for. Yeah, and it, it was funny whenever I saw Got Me Live, uh, Ryland, after I think it was Boston Overcore, he was like, all right, here's a song from a record somewhere city. And he looked down at the set and was like, oh, never mind. Apparently, I don't know my set very well. And they ended up doing some songs in the brightest days. And I'm assuming after Second Best Friend, they were going to do some songs from somewhere city, but didn't end up getting to see any of them because fucking tornadoes and shit. That was so much fun. Um, yeah, all my but yeah, hate um, natural disasters. No, for real, fuck that shit. Ruined my my day. I'm kidding. It was it was a great day. Um, but um, yeah, agree with everything you've said. This is a fucking great record. Like I said, just where I was, how I was feeling at the time when I first discovered this album, and especially a song like Doctor Whom's for the chorus is literally just I think I'm starting to like myself. Like it was just something I needed to hear then. You know, it was like a shoulder to cry on at that time in my life. It was something I needed so badly. And something I wasn't really getting from a lot of music at the time. Like, I did have the big bands I'd always come back to when I was feeling like shit. But, like, this record was, like, the thing that I needed. And not to mention that musically, it's just one of the most unique emo and just rock records in general I've ever heard. It's got one of the most impeccable track listings I've ever heard in any album ever. Everything just flows together so good. If I have songs from this album in a playlist, I always expect the song after it and the track list to follow it, and it never does, and it always makes me sad. Uh, but I just... It's so, so good. From, like, the weird structuring on some songs, like 666 Flags, which is just, like a bunch of verses and shit like cobbled together it just it works so well and it's got blast beats in it and it's got like this crazy heavy section near the end it's so insanely unique and every time i talk about this album i just want to like listen to it again like it's just it's that inspiring of an album like i just want to like do everything i can to know, learn as much as i can about the concept of the album learn all the lyrics do whatever i can um to just become as familiar with it as i can be and I think I'm up to that point here. I've probably heard this album like 30 to 50 times all the way through, which is a lot for me for albums because I'm always listening to new shit. This is an album I all, always return to. It's never left rotation since I heard it. Um, yeah, just, if you've heard, if, you've, if you get anything out of this episode, it's just to listen to Somewhere City. If you don't care about anything else we have to say, just listen to Somewhere City, man. It's so good. I, I can't, there's a lot more I could say, but... We have a lot more shit to get through, and I think you understand how important this is for both of us. So, yeah, I mean, amazing album. 11 out of 10, 12 out of 10, 13 out of 10, whatever the fuck. Please check it out. It's super good. Yeah, that's it. Definitely one of our favorite albums of all time, but we do have to keep it going so this doesn't get too incredibly long. Lane, what do we have <laughs> after the release of Somewhere City, um, which we will not sadly be talking about? <laughs> next is uh the, the origami angel broke minecraft dp we'll, we'll kind of do a little thing on this because it's it's it's, it's a fun release it's, it's funny it's, it's it's silly personally i'm not too crazy about the ep the only notable thing is the early version of greenbelt station really other than that i don't really have anything else to say i'm just not really a fan of this ep yeah, I don't really come back to it. It's it's another, like, goofy side of them. Like, hey, guys, we made an EP about Minecraft, and, like, that's fun. Uh, but for the remixes themselves, I'm not too hot on them. There's not a whole lot of them that really stand out to me. Um, there's a few that have samples weaved in that I really, really like. I forget which one it is, but there's one at the end that has, like, a really long, like, vocal sample that's really, really cool. Um, and a lot of them are, like, multiple songs mixed together. And the titles are like remix, remixed even. Like they have like rom com hacky sack slash space flex t skirt. Like it's so, they're so silly. 24 hour delivery, Ruby, Olympic high dive. It's just like silly shit that they mixed around to make the titles. I love that a lot. Um, the earlier version of Game Battle Station is cool, but not better than the album version, in my opinion. It's fine. It's, it's not in the central listen. I've probably only heard it like two or three times. 
Um, it's like the release I come back to the release from them, but it's 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 a fun release if you're itching for more Origami Angel content. You'll find something you like on it, but it's not essential to listening to them. Yeah. Also, I do want to point out. I forgot to mention this. I was I was supposed to, but I didn't. Um, on Origami Angel's Bandcamp, uh, there is a jazz cover of Doctor Whomst called Jazzy Whomst that I found. Uh, I thought it was worth noting. I don't remember what exactly it was for. I think they just did it because fuck it, but definitely cool. Check, worth checking out if you're an Origami Angel fan and you want to listen to some more stuff. But um, Any last words about Origami Angel Broke Minecraft? No, it's just, it's just a remix EP. It's, it's fun. It's cool. Yeah. So next we have the inspiration for this entire podcast. Actually, we have Gami Gang. And I, I think we touched on this in the Hot Mulligan episode of the podcast, um, the pilot episode, which I talked to, um, I went to an Eichler show the other day. If any of you guys know Eichlers, shout out Eichlers, they're super cool. Um, Ska, I forgot what it was, like Hyper Ska, it was Hyper Ska. Anyways, uh, I was telling Eichlers about the podcast and Eichlers um, had asked me, I was like, oh yeah, we did hot mulligan for the first episode of the podcast and it was the pilot episode and he said something that i felt like such an idiot for and i feel like lane lane could you can you could you predict what he asked me about the pilot episode being hot mulligan the, the hot mulligan album pilot he it asked was like, like something what, like did that? you guys do it on pilot and i was like oh my fucking god why didn't we think of that and it was um <laughs> I don't know why we didn't think of that. I guess I think we were just too excited to talk about the new Hot Mulligan album. But um, yeah, I think in the first episode, the Hot Mulligan episode, we talked about where we got the name from. And Paper Pals is just a play on Gami Gang. So Lane, I, I came up with it. Lane suggested that we use it. And now here we are. Uh, or Gummy Angels, really. The reason this podcast got created with Summer City and then just the name of the podcast is a play on uh, uh is a play on a uh, gami gang and kind of the the cover art for it. if you look at the cover art it's just the white background except we just added some art on it but um this album is nothing like somewhere city in the in the sense of the organization it's more of like if somewhere city went off the rails and didn't have a clear direct message it, it's just origami angel pumping out songs that go incredibly fucking hard and this album is arguably, like, some people could say it's better than Somewhere City, and I wouldn't be mad at it. Um, me, personally, I don't think so. But I am a massive, 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 massive fucking fan of this album. I love this album. There's so many fun parts of this album, funny samples and all that. They sample Star Wars Episode Three. Um, really just so many amazing songs. And one of Gami's biggest songs, Bossa Nova Core, uh, is on here. Um, yeah, just this album is incredibly good, and I was belting it out during the show. Yeah, this this album this album's fucking great. Um, yeah, it's it's basically just somewhere city. If somewhere city did a shit ton of crack cocaine and had like no focus at all, because it's it's a double album. This is a double album. Um, it's a fifty minute double album. It's a very quick double album, but it's a double album. And because of the long length and the two disc format, they just do literally everything that they have ever wanted to do ever, which obviously isn't the case because they've done a lot of shit other than this album since this album came out that's different from a lot of the stuff on it. But still, you know what I mean? They cover a wide range of shit on here from like the standard Gami sound, like on songs like Self Destruct and No Offense. To more acoustic and slower tracks like Greenbelt Station. And then you have stuff like uh, Bossa Nova Core, which is literally like has Bossa Nova influences on the song. You've got a song like Spoons Rattling, which fucking great title, by the way, but which is literally just a heavy hardcore song. Like it's so fucking crazy. And then songs like Tom Holland Notes, which has like a really, really poppy chorus to it. But then like halfway through the song, they just like start becoming a metal band all of a sudden before going back into the chorus like it's nothing like there's so many weird little moments like that on this album there's songs that are like less than a minute long where Ryan is just like speaking all the words really fast it's like 
ADHD the album, but like in a good way. Like I'm not saying ADHD is a bad thing. Please don't yell at me. I swear to God, if I get called like ableist or something, I swear Booker, to fucking I am God. offended. I, I have ADHD this... and I am offended <laughs> by this. Fuck you. I hope your dog gets put into an oven and dies. <laughs> Like you, you get what I mean. Like it's just, it's very jittery. It's a very fun album. It's very all over the place. It's a very, very fun and this fantastic record that doesn't take itself very seriously. It has a lot of fun elements to it. It literally has a trap intro, a, a trap beat as an instrumental as the intro for the album. It's so absurd, but I I love it dearly. Um, yeah, they, they cover so much stuff on this album. It's so hard to like pick out best songs because there's so many of them and most of them are fucking amazing but like if i had to choose the best song it's 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 easily no offense it's not even close it's like top three origami angel song for me it's so good it makes me feel so fucking great i love this like the concept behind it where ryland is talking about like how his his significant other is superior to literally any religion ever it's just like, I just love the concept behind it. I love the ending around this, like, everyone see exactly what you mean the whole goddamn motherfucking world to me. Like, it's, I love that. It's one of my favorite parts of like any song ever. Um, close second, though, is Blanket Statement, easily. It's one of their catchiest choruses. I love it. GG, which I think is, stands for Good Game, I'm pretty sure, um, is an amazing closer to the album. Gami has a thing with having these really dramatic and long closers on their projects. And I think they do it fantastically. And this is another song where it reuses the motif from the beginning of the album, builds and builds and builds and builds until it gets to this emotional climax near the end. Um, there, there's, I love this record. It's, it's nearly as good as Gami. I mean, as summer city, if it weren't for a few songs near the back half, I don't think, hold a candle to the best songs on it but it's still like a nine out of ten it's so close to a ten i i love gami gang yeah i i do really like the ending the gg because it's the end of the album and it's supposed to be like oh you it's it's over a good game but it's also an abbreviation for gami gang um another thing i'm the fan of are the um one thing that me and Lane when we talked about how mulligan one thing we really enjoyed are the, the very absurd names and gami definitely has that on this album with uh, like Mobius Chicken Strip, No Offense, but it's No Offense, um, Isopropyl Alchemy, um, uh, Bossa Nova Core, the obvious one, and then there's like Spoons Rattling, which is the SpongeBob meme, uh, and then Tom Holland Oates, Bed Bath and Batman Beyond. There's a bunch of just really fun, stupid names, and it's such a really fun, stupid album. Like Lane said, it's like ADHD, the album. It's just so on and off, and it also has the official version of Green Belt Station, and I fucking love Green Belt Station. It's such a beautiful, amazing song. But um, yeah, definitely on par with Somewhere City, one of Gami's best releases ever. This is, from up to this point, up until Brightest Days was released, Gami did not have a single bad album because these two were just fucking perfect. And even then, Brightest Days is not a bad album at all. Uh, it's a little under par to what they were making. But from this point onwards... um. They really just experimented because by the time the next year hit, there there was definitely a shift in their sound, um, which we will get to in return, and then a massive change in sound and depart. But <laughs> yeah, this was really the last of what I would call classic Gami, because classic Gami kind of had uh, a certain sound to it, and up to this point after Gami Gang, they. They kind of changed their sound up a bit. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm delusional, but who you know? That's just how I see it. You know, I totally, I totally see what you're talking about. Especially since most of the releases since Gami Gang have been have mainly focused on like a central theme, including the brightest days. They all have like this central theme throughout the sound. Um, and yeah, I do agree. This is like the last Gami album that is like just full on them doing whatever the fuck they want to do. Um, instead of focusing on like one particular thing. And I don't think that them focusing on a theme is a bad thing. I think they do it well, like very well compared to any other band that would try something like that. Um, but this is my favorite Gami. The Gami where they're just all over the place doing whatever they want, throwing shit to see if it sticks, but most of it just ends up fucking sticking because I don't know, they're just like the luckiest bastards on the planet or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, man, there's so many songs in here. It's hard to talk about like favorite tracks, but like, no offense, Mock Bike is another... That's a Pokemon reference, right? Mock Bike. Uh, 
really good song. One of the best on here. Uh, know You is a really underrated one that has a really catchy chorus in it. Um, I love Trust. It's got a really pretty melody on it. Um, Caught in a Moment is so fun. It's like this real fast-paced, positive banger. Um, as for like negatives, I said, like obviously I've talked up this album a ton, but I do think there's some issues with it, but it's mostly just in the fact that near the end of the album, there are some songs that... I don't really think there's any filler necessarily on this album, but just some songs I feel like are weaker than others. Like Dr. Fawn Doom, Footloose Cannonball Brothers, I've never really been that big of a fan of. You Won't, I think is kind of eh, in terms of the lyrical content. But other than that, like this album is like near perfection. I love this record. It's so good. We've talked a lot about it, but I, I love Gami Gang. It's so good. This fucking podcast is named after Gami Gang. You know we love it. Yeah, um, we, yeah that's, we that's technically that. their last... Technically, their last studio album because the brightest days isn't really an album, but I like to consider it one. Um, so yeah, that's that's Gummy Gang. Yeah, so Gummy Gang is incredible, and then we have the turn, the, the big turn that Gummy Gang, or should I say, a return. Um, uh, we have return, which is re, it's like re colon turn, which is supposed to be like an email thing, but return pen hell pen hall Francis and Life from the UFO. This EP, three songs, is incredible. Life from the UFO is one of, I'd say, one of the best, like, modern Gami songs. And Penn Hall is an amazing opener. It's just an acoustic out, or it's an acoustic EP. I think it's incredible. I, th- I really just think it's amazing. I don't have much to say about it because it's just an acoustic EP, but the lyricism, I absolutely love Life from the UFO. I'm sure Lane loves Life from the UFO. One of my favorite Gami, like, recent Gami releases. Oh, yeah. I think this is one of their best releases ever. I, I go back and forth between Doing the Most and Return being my favorite Gummy EP. I do think that Doing the Most is better. It's a more consistent, solid release, I think. But Return is so, so good. I think all three of these songs are fucking fantastic. With the exception of Penn Hall, I think they all have a, a shot at being in the upper half of their discography, especially live from the UFO. One of their best songs, I think. I love the vocals on it. It's so pretty. There's not many songs that can make me feel the way that Live from the UFO does. It's just, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. It feels so genuine. I love Francis, too. It took me a while to, like, get into the other two songs on the record because I had heard Live from the UFO and just kept on fucking playing it over and over again because it's so good. But when I finally actually got a chance to listen to the other two songs, I found that they're, like, nearly, like, almost just as good as that song. And Francis is, like, the biggest example of that. It's one of my favorite Origami Angel songs. It's one that I come to when I'm kind of feeling a bit down. I'm not so sure why. Maybe it's just because of the sound of it. Um, But it's another really, really pretty song. I love Rylan's vocals on it. I love how soft the guitars sound on this one. And Penn Hall is just like a really fun, nice, upbeat acoustic guitar jam to start the album off. And I really, really like that. Um, Yeah, this is another one of my favorite Origami Angel releases, honestly. I just, I love acoustic music. I'm a big sucker for that kind of shit. So this is perfect for me. Like acoustic emo music is just like my favorite thing on the planet. Um, And this EP is just one of the best chunks of songs from that specific genre of emo I, just, I love it so much it's it's so good i love return great stuff yeah really really great stuff from modern gami um any final words i don't really have anything else to say about return it's just a really good ep uh no other than it's technically one part of a two-part series and eps whereas the first ep which is return is like acoustic you know very pretty and then we get into the next gami release which is the second ep in the little mini series i guess uh the part which came out like three days or four days after return came out yeah so we have return and then the part which is meant to be completely contrast because you have an acoustic album you know and if everything is controlled by someone, I'd like to thank them for making me know you. And then you come, uh, they come back with the part, which is a full on hardcore badass EP that says, fuck you. You know, it's really hardcore, really fucking good for their first attempt at hardcore music, especially for uh, an emo band for the same people that made Summer City and the same people that made Greenbelt Station. This is an incredibly good hardcore album, especially for their sound. Because, obviously, Origami Angels sound, they're not capable of doing anything too crazy. Like, Rylan can't do fucking death metal. But for what they are, this is really good at uh, what um, Hardcore was 
And I do think they should try doing something else with this uh, besides just these three songs, Judge, Fawn, and Foe. Yeah, I, I do really like this EP. The part is just, it's such a crazy turn for them. I remember looking up on Reddit or something just to see what people thought of this EP whenever I first heard it. And so many people were just like, insanely confused they were just like why is origami angel doing this i'm not here for that and like those people just haven't been listening to gami then because they're so they that's just their thing they just do shit like this like they they do stuff like this i don't know what else to say it's just they take specific sounds like this and just make little mini projects out of them just for fun, just because they can. And they definitely can, because I think this EP is really good. Um, It's a really solid hardcore album. And this isn't just us saying that it's good, when in actuality we don't know shit about, like, more hardcore music. Like, we're both, like, fans of metal music and hardcore punk and shit like that. So, like, coming from actual fans of the genre, of the genres that Gami is trying to like do on this album i think they generally do a great job of it it's not like the top like the greatest hardcore stuff ever put on tape but it's a really solid attempt on it and if i had to pick like a favorite song it would definitely be judge um it's got like more of some of the more listen more of the lyrical moments that stick out to me on the ep um it really just feels like one big song honestly but i i don't really mind that it's a really quick burst of energy the whole ep is like one song's length so it's really quick it goes by really fast and the songs are really fast and they go through all these crazy different hardcore passages it's just it's a really it's a fun time i i do really like the part yeah i do think the part is a super funny ep but um other than that we have reached the end, uh, the most recent Gami released, which was released this summer. Two singles, Thank You, New Jersey, and my PG County Summer. Uh, I got to hear uh, Thank You, New Jersey live. Um, but The Brightest Days, um, Lane got to hear more Brightest Days songs than I did, actually. Um, so The Brightest Days, I was actually a really big fan of Thank You, New Jersey. I really enjoy that this entire thing is... It's not a Gami album. I respect their decision to call it a mixtape. Uh, it is not a Gami album. Gami albums have... I don't know. It's, it's just, in a way, this is just a summertime EP. They didn't say, okay, this is our next big album. They didn't make it an EP because it's, you know, it's just not an EP. Um, and it's just like they wanted to drop some summer songs, so they didn't make it a big thing. They were just like, all right, this is a mixtape that we're going to drop for summer. And it's just a bunch of summer songs. My PG County Summer and The Brightest Days and one of my favorite Second Best Friend because of the message in it. Um, I really I really enjoyed this album. I think it was great, especially after not having uh, Gami releases for a minute. This was my first ever uh, Gami release because I became a fan um, last year. So this was the first ever Gami release that I actually got to experience. And it was very, very, very good. Yeah, we stayed up on release date to listen to this. I remember when Thank You New Jersey dropped. It's I think it's generally one of their best songs ever. I love Thank You New Jersey. It's one of the songs I show the people to get them into the band now. Like I've shown this song to people and they just fucking love it. It's just so much fun. I love this song to death. And I think it was like the best choice for a single on this. Um but yeah, I, I I like the whole concept behind The Brightest Days, where it's just a mixtape of some fun summer jams. You know, it's another EP where they're focused on a specific thing, and I think they do it very well. I did hear a lot of the songs from this live. I heard, what, three of them live? I heard the opening riff for Second Best Friend and was so sad they didn't get to finish it. But they played The Brightest Days, Thank You, New Jersey, and Kobayashi Maru, which were all really cool to hear live, especially Kobayashi Maru. I specifically remember while they were playing that song, it's like a very fast-paced, energetic track. There was a guy fucking crowd surfing and screaming every single word to the song at the top of his lungs. Like, he was having the time of his life. I feel so bad that the show got cut, that got cut short because that dude was having so much fun. Uh, it, 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 they were doing so good. I'm so upset about that. But uh, anyway... Uh, the Brightest Days is really good. I think it's a really solid release by them. Um, in terms of my favorite songs, I do really like the title track. I like the use of the ukulele on this thing. It's like not something we've seen from Gami before, and I think if they were to introduce it on any album, a summer-themed EP or mixtape is definitely the best way to introduce an instrument like that. Um, Thank You, New Jersey, 
is awesome. Second Best Friend is the best song on the album, I think. The the, the message really struck a chord with me when I first heard it. It still kind of does. Um, Looking Out's really pretty. And Few and Far Between reuses the beginning motif of the album really well, wraps everything up in a nice little bow. Um, only issues I have with it, really, not still really not the biggest fan of my PG County Summer. I wasn't really a huge fan of it whenever they dropped it as a single. It's grown on me a little bit, but still not one of my favorites. And Picture Frame is one of their weakest songs. I think it's like the bottom three Gami songs, honestly, in my opinion. It's still good, but I think it's a little awkward in terms of its execution. But besides that, I love The Brightest Days. It's super fun. It was perfect to drop this summer theme DP, like dead in the middle of summer. I was so excited when this dropped. I listened to it like crazy when it came out. Um, and I still I still put it on every now and then. I think it's a great little EP or a mixtape or whatever you want to call it. And I think it's a worthy addition to their catalog. Yeah, sorry. My mic was muted. Uh, sorry. Um, but yeah, um, I really enjoyed this album. I thought it was really fun to just jam out to. I skated to this album a lot over the summer. Uh, it really is just a jam. It's really... It's a really funny EP. Um, not crazy about the album art, but, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Overall, very fun uh, album. Don't take it too seriously like every other Gami release. Um, just have fun with it. A lot of people were taking it, like, way too seriously. And it's like, this is why Gami didn't call it an album. is Because everyone's like, man, this review wasn't that good. It's one of their worst things. It's like, it's supposed to just be fun. It's not supposed to be a serious album. Just, like... Take it as it is. Take it as, oh, this is some shit they dropped for the summer to have fun with, you know? Have fun with this shit. And, um, yeah, that's really all I have to say about it. Anything, any last words for you, Lane? No, I just think it's another really solid addition to their catalog full of literally zero fucking misses. This band, I feel like, is, like, incapable of, like, missing on the single release because there are eight main releases into their catalog and they still haven't struck out once, so I highly doubt they're going to do that anytime soon. Um, and yeah, the brightest days is just another example of how fucking great Origami Angel is and how they just always are trying out new things and seeing what sticks. And I love them for that. Um, they're such an interesting band for that. I, I just, I love that they constantly try out new things and experiment. And this is a great example of it. I think the brightest days is really good. So yeah, overall, Origami Angel has changed after Gami Gang. They've become more experimental, but in no way does that mean they've gotten any worse. Uh, I actually really enjoy the new direction that Gami's taking towards their music and overall the entire discog- the entire Gami discography is absolutely amazing. I think everyone should give it um, a, a, a look because they don't miss really in any of these releases that they have. I definitely recommend everyone checks it out. What do you have to say about just the entire discography? Uh, just the entire discography, I think it's a very nice, tight, compacted discography so far. Um, you've got two main nine albums, six EPs slash mixtapes slash whatevers. Um, I just I think it's a really fun discography to go through because nothing really sounds similar to each other. You're never really going to get bored listening to this to this band's albums or music. Um, going through them in order, I think there's always a surprise with every release that you come into. Um, it's not like a lot of bands where you do really like the sound, but it kind of feels a little samey or like they're kind of sticking to one specific thing and just kind of running with it for a few releases. This band tries something new for literally everything that they put out. And if there's something that you don't like or really vibe with in one release by them, you'll definitely find something else that you appreciate. Hell, if you're a fucking hardcore fan, they literally have a record for you. If you enjoy acoustic emo, they literally have a record for you. If you need a song to put on during summer, they literally have a fucking record for you. If you if you feel like shit, they literally have multiple records for you. Like they they just have so much for so many people, and I love that about their discography. I love that so much of their music is different from one another. Um, and I love that they're always coming up with fresh new ideas and whether people fucking like it or not, like they're just always having a good time and they always just do whatever they want. Like you're never going to really see a band like them just releasing a Pokemon themed EP or a Minecraft themed remix EP. They, they just do this shit because they they're big nerds. They're really talented and they just wanted to, you know, like and that's what I love about this band. Um, and what I love about their discography in general, I think it's a very nice, compact discography. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to get through it. There's a lot of great music to find in it, and I think it's one of the discographies and emo that you'll have the most fun with, and you'll come back to the most, and there's so much replay value in it. Um, 
and from front to back, I don't think there's a single bad project. Although I do think there are some that are better than others, obviously, but great, great discography overall. This has been the second episode of the Peer Pals podcast. Let us know what you want, to, want us to do next. If you're watching this on Spotify, don't forget to check us out on YouTube. We have YouTube videos with visuals on Lane's channel, The Smooth Criminal. Don't forget to also check out my channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, comment down below what you want us to uh, do next uh, or, you know, any ideas that you want us to do. Uh, and check us out on Spotify. Um, yeah, that's that's really it. I uh, hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of the podcast. And um, don't forget, fuck Lou Diamond. Yeah, fuck Lou Diamond. <laughs>